So in my last video, I took about 45 minutes out of it. It was originally two hours in length. And this is somewhat of a follow-up in regards to going in a little bit more depth and emphasis on the behavior and tactics of, well, Gregory. If you haven't seen my last video, I recommend you watch it. It's linked down below. But I'd first like to say thank you so much. The video got demonetized, but in less than two days, it's already hit 300,000 views. Despite it being demonetized, which means that it gets basically shunned off the, out of the YouTube algorithm, and it still managed to hit that many views, and that is incredible. You guys retweeted my video over 3,000 times on Twitter, which is just incredible. I really just appreciate you guys going the extra mile to get this video shared out. Because of that, I'm going to enjoy some coffee and a big old legendary donut. I took out 45 minutes, so here we go. Hey, I read everything you wrote, and I made a response video that could both you go check out what you wrote. 90% of what you said was totally true, and I don't know, regardless of whatever you do with your future, like, quite frankly, my life is really messed up right now, so it's like selfish for me to ask you to be a part of that regardless. Um, but um, whatever you do from here, it's like, whatever. I, I admit like all the guilt and everything that I've, I, I jumped into something that I didn't fully understand. And you were there with me and you took the steps with me, but the reality is, is I, I led the way into the darkness or whatever. So, I'm so incredibly sorry for everything. Like I'm being so cliche. And, yeah, I understand. Like, whatever you do, I understand. First step to improving yourself is realizing that you are the problem. Yes, Gregory, that's usually true. But acknowledging a problem doesn't do anything if you don't try to solve it, fix it, or grow from it. What you're listening here, and as you're going to see further on as these voicemails escalate, is these are voicemails that he left on a woman he dated by the name of AJ. It was a very short relationship, probably one of the shortest relationships he's ever been in. But of course, Greg does what Greg does. When that short duration of a relationship ended, he blasts a lot of personal, private information out on the internet. But I want you to keep listening, because these voicemails escalate from, Oh, I want you, I want you back, to... I'm going to tell and expose you for every th horrible thing you've ever done. This video is more behind the psychology of the way he thinks and operates. If you couldn't tell that from the last video, this one will be a little bit more in depth. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So I think I'm gonna leave you alone. I'm sorry. Bye. Listen, um, I just, I don't know why I missed it the first time, but I read across uh, the part where you said something about being homeless and jobless. Um, dude, you're not, you're not homeless. Come on. Like, seriously, I am here. If you need anything, just let me know. Okay? Bye. Have you noticed a trend when somebody is struggling either with finances or even having shelter over their head? He just wants to come up and kind of swoop somebody up, almost as if to, like, get them completely codependent upon him. And then once that occurs, his tactics and... Manipulation gets more embedded into the trees he's working on. Hey, so you know, I am not going to change my mind on this one, like, as far as you coming tomorrow, Thursday. Um, the ticket hasn't been canceled, so you already know that I'm dedicated. Okay, you cut me off. Um, as I was saying, I haven't attempted to get a refund or anything. Um, I'm basically putting it online. If you don't do it, I'm not going to be upset. I'm going to understand. Um, but if you do it, you're going to blow my mind. Like, literally blow my mind. And, like, I'll do what it takes to make everything work out. Whether it be counseling for me or whatever. Um, I, look, I was recently informed that I have borderline personality disorder where I, I take things to extremes. And if you're not my way, then you're wrong or something like that. Like, it's, and when I look at you, I think of a person who has things in control mentally. Like, I have everything in control in my life except for my emotions, you know, except for my relationships. And if I can get that in control, then I think we're actually a really good pair. I really do. And the reason is, is because of how happy I am around you and how complete I feel. And there's only you. Like, Sky is my friend. I've been talking to her as a friend. I told you she's always been my friend. So if I don't have you, then I guess we'll be single for a very long time. Regardless, thank you for the time that you did give me. I really appreciate it. And if this is it, 
okay. Um, I might call again or something because I want to talk to you, but I understand if you don't answer. It's just kind of a bummer. I'm getting my stuff together. And now it's over. But yeah, I get it. So, talk to you later, hopefully. Now, something that's important to take notice here is that while this relationship was literally less than two weeks and he's ex expressing that he's, like, in love with them and how they make them feel and he's like, that you're the only person who makes me feel this way, in less than two weeks, at the same time, he's talking with Shiloh, the same time he's still involved with his wife or ex-wife Sky and all that legal stuff that I mentioned in my last video was ongoing, the whole alimony, all that stuff was still ongoing at the same time. So he's essentially juggling almost like three people at once, but he's also hurting these three people all at once at the same time by his sporadic behavior. And one week he's in love with this person, the next week he's in love with this person, that person, and it's crazily dysfunctional. Hello, I am calling you again, because, I don't know, I'll stop calling you after Thursday, I promise. I promise. I'm just, um, I don't know. I feel like this is how I feel. I feel like I'm going to be, like, the coolest guy ever. And you're going to see it on my videos. Like, I'm going to be, like, once I, now I've figured everything out. No. Like, basically, if, if you're not here, then I'm just going to be making videos with Sky and Seer and Stefan. And I guess, yeah. And it's like, if you don't want to be a part of my life, that's cool. I understand. It's just like, I feel like, I feel like we're missing out on something really cool because of what I've figured out about myself. Like, it's legitimate revolutions. There's no faking. You'll see that when I just go on. I'm, like, literally going on. And, like, everything we've been through, I've been, like, looking back, and, like, everything that we've been through is very hard, very... I gotta go. I'm getting a call. Sorry. Bah. Hey. I... I was just a call to you is like, play the lottery. You don't think you're ever going to win, but you sure hope so. Um, problem is, I've turned into a stalker. So, I'm going to stop now. It's going to be cute, make noises, make you smile, make everything seem okay. But, the bottom line is, all I'm going to be doing now is waiting for your call. Hoping, well, I mean, i got to edit and live my life and all that stuff, but I will have my phone by me. Um, it's your choice, buddy. I'm here. I need to stop, though, because I don't want to turn into total, total, total creep. Okay. So believe me or not, I want to work everything out, but that's okay if you don't want to. I understand. It could be beautiful. It could be amazing. It could be so gorgeous, but you don't believe in me anymore. So, and just so you know, everything I said publicly... There were never attacks on you. I was just living my life. Like, it's kind of like how you were just living your life when you said the thing about sensual massage. You're just, you're just being you. And I felt offended like it was an attack or, or some kind of, like, horrible insult or something. We're reading the same book here. Same book. Different perspectives. We can work this out, but if you don't want to, I understand. i got to stop being a stalker now because I do not want to be shallow. So... Call me, or not, or live your life, or be free, be whatever you want. I'm not here to judge you, or control you, or do anything ever again. And if I do, I need to sit in the counselor's office and tell I figure my problems out. I promise. A big prom big super promise. This is a guy saying, I'm dedicating myself to making you happy. If you want that, you don't believe in me. Okay. That's that. That's okay. And Sky is my friend, so just so you know, she's in my life. She's my friend. Because she's cool and she's helping me through all this. So, bye-bye. Hey, um, I really wish, like, the more I'm looking at the borderline personality, I'm really wishing that I knew I had a problem with this before I ever even got into anything with you. Just so I could, like, forewarn you and actively work on it during the relationship and actually give myself the appropriate amount of doubt. Because this entire time I've been looking at myself going... Now here's the thing about BPD he's claiming to have. Onision never actually goes and gets diagnosed for anything. 
he reads something on Google, and if there's any similarity and anything that kind of reflects anything on him, he just says, I'm this, or I'm not that. Like an online test just to disprove how innocent he is or how he's not this way. If someone has BPD, there's nothing inherently wrong with that as long as you take the proper precautions because medication with that can have ex extremely help. And there's never any shame in taking any medication, ever. But I honestly don't know if he just says that to hide behind his crappy actions, but we already know that Greg is inherently against taking medication. In a relationship I was in before, I asked this girl not because it made her different than how I preferred. I liked her personality exactly the way it was. I didn't want her to be chill or whatever. I just wanted her to be in her natural state. I would have felt the same way about head meds, bipolar medication or whatever you want to call it, especially when she didn't have any disorder but was diagnosed with one. At least from my perspective, she didn't have a disorder. Now, if someone tells me not to ride that certain brand of bike or they tell me not to drink that certain juice and they say that they'll break up with me, if I do, I don't have to understand why. But if they just say it really hurts my feelings or makes me uncomfortable or whatever, I'm going to stop riding that brand. I'm going to stop drinking that certain kind of juice because it's not so important to me that I'm going to destroy a relationship. Relationships shouldn't necessarily be about one person telling another person what they can and can't do. It should be about that person automatically doing what comes naturally to them oh, she's wrong, and oh, I know everything about what I'm talking about, and oh, I'm a perfectly sane human being when I'm looking at all these definitions, and it's like, I wasn't sane at all. I had a serious problem. I still have this serious problem. And I don't know, I, this is me just telling you, like, if you don't want to get on the plane, I totally understand because I have a lot of work to do on myself, and if you don't want to be there with me through all that, that's fine. Wait for me to get better. Um, I mean, if I'm still... I'm still feeling the same way about you in the future, like, and we can always figure something else out for later on down the line. It doesn't need to be rushed. You know, I was busy blaming you for a lot of stuff that is all my fault. I just really hope you don't feel any remorse for anything that you did, really. I pushed so hard that anything you did in reaction really can't be held against you. So I'm sorry, and I'm working on myself. I'm really looking at researching this. If you could actually help me, that'd be good, but you don't want to talk to me, so, which is why I should definitely stop calling now. Okay, so this is what's um, I keep thinking back to the hotel and back to all our Skype conversations, and I'm stuck in that rut that a lot of people are where when they get out of a relationship, all I remember is good, 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 and I think it's especially because I feel like I'm at fault is that it's hard for me. Like, I think that you have it easy because I've admitted all my guilt. And, I mean, easy to an extent that on the emotional level, not on your situation, because I'm sure your situation isn't perfect in other areas. But you know that I, I'm wrong in so many areas, and because of that, you can so easily move on. And yet, I'm stuck with this, I was wrong, and I just want to make everything right. You know? So I hope that on a human level, you can sympathize with me. You know, just talk to me regular and realize that's what's going on in my mind. So I guess I'll just feel guilty forever, and that's how it has to be. Um, so, I don't know. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey. Um, I'm not sure why I'm leaving a message this time. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. Okay, remember when you were calling me earlier and you're like, I'm using every media outlet to contact you. I'm like trying everything. I'm begging for you to come back to me and all this stuff. It's like, I'm like that, but like an elongated version. Like you're not giving me the mercy that I gave. My name's Gregory and I gave you mercy. My name's Gregory and I was nice to you. I'm a nice guy. Therefore, you owe me something. I gave you mercy. I gave you grace. Therefore, you owe that to me. Entitled Greg strikes again. So I'm stuck in limbo. This sucks, dude. Like, okay, do me a favor. Please, at least in some way, write me saying no. You know what? Never mind. I'm going to take you not responding as a no. 
So if you get on that plane, which I doubt you're going to, but hey, maybe you're crazy enough to do it, then awesome. But if not, I'm going to leave it alone now. I'm actually going to well, I should have to save my phone because you could call, and I will leave it alone now. Hopefully I have entertained you, and hopefully you are having a good night. I took the fall for everything in my videos, and now I'm getting nothing but about it. I made a 20-minute video defending myself. Because there's things that you said that needed to be clarified. Except I stopped fighting. I didn't want you to be hurt anymore. I didn't want people to talk to you anymore. And now I'm on the receiving end of so much criticism. I'm losing subscribers and likes like crazy. You know, for future reference, Greg, so you probably shouldn't uh, publicly blast on the internet how many partners somebody has had. Because one, that's not your business. But two... Mention that because they have so many partners, therefore any, you know, blue or blue that it, one goes through isn't as serious because of how many partners they've had. I'm asking you for mercy. Did I sacrifice myself for nothing? Did I, Gregory, sacrifice myself for nothing? I sacrifice myself everything. I sacrifice for numerous women all at the same time because I can't balance what I want. You talk about love, if you know what it is. I would never do this to someone I loved. Well, we all know that's a lie. You've claimed to love a lot of people, but do a lot of things that typically, if you truly love somebody, you're not gonna do or post on the internet. Doesn't matter how much you love somebody if they hurt you or things don't work out. If you really truly love them at that point, you wouldn't blast private details of their lives on the internet and try to use that against them, which you're still doing as of last week. I've given everything that I could to play the nice guy, to be a good person. Nothing's coming back to me, and I guess that's how it has to be, because that's what it means when I say I hope you live a long and happy life. It means I'm going to do what I can to make that happen, and that means taking the fall for everything, not arguing with the single thing that you said about me. I hope you give me a chance, but if you don't, okay, I'm still sorry for everything, and I still love you. I wish you would have them urge to say the same, but I'm left in the cold darkness, completely alone. Goodbye. I have no idea how you can be doing this to me and feel no remorse for it. I'm completely oblivious to how you can live with this. I have no idea. You completely ignore me. Notice the escalation here from the very start of this where he starts off ending almost every single voicemail with, I understand, I understand, I understand. And literally, as he's ignored for less than three days, it escalates to, how can you do this? How can you live with yourself by ignoring? How can you live with yourself ignoring somebody who only left almost 20 plus voicemails in less than three days, clinging, begging for attention and mercy? I should do nothing but support you and say, look at her side of the story and everyone pay attention and you ignore me. How can you do this to another human being? I just don't understand. Yeah, that's what a lot of people do. You should ignore creepy people like yourself, Greg. Maybe if you ignored yourself and your desires and your bizarre interest in people significantly younger than you, you wouldn't be where you are right now to this very day. Just so you know, because of what you've done, because of the way you've slandered me, because of the lies you've told, because of the fact that you've completely ignored me and you've completely humiliated me publicly, and despite the fact that I was being kind about everything and saying, okay, fine, I'm not going to attack someone I love and I'm not going to fight back even though she's clearly attacking me, and I was hoping that you would actually answer your phone and deal with me like a human being. Because of all of this, I'm going to reveal every single detail. Every detail. And then everyone will know exactly who you are. You want to slander me? Well, I'm going to fight you with the truth. And the truth is not going to feel good. Goodbye. So what did Greg do? He made a series of videos yet again on AJ talking about her past partners and ultimately just saying things that were completely untrue. From simply observing these voicemails, you can see how it escalates. You can see how it turns and completely contradicts everything that started off from the very first voicemails. But in my last video, I showed off an email that Onision was sending Sky, his ex-wife,
basically threatening himself that he was going to do things to himself unless she instantly responded to him, stopped ignoring him, or agreed that he didn't have to pay alimony for a divorce that he initiated because of another girl. This is a really big red flag behavior that I want everybody to focus on, is that if you're in a relationship, doesn't matter with who, and like you want to have a mutual breakup, or you don't want to be with this person anymore, and you go through the proper means of having just a normal breakup, and that person starts using threats of I am going to boom boom myself, you need to understand and acknowledge that that is a crazy, crazy manipulation tactic. In fact, it brings back to my old, old, very first relationship when I was 16 years old. This was a very common thing that I dealt with with my first ever real relationship that I had. Anytime that I wanted to end the relationship, there would be threats of boom, boom. And the reason that I bring this up is because I mentioned in my last video, but in one of Onision's deleted videos, Onision deletes a lot of videos, by the way, he specifically admits that his threats of the boom, boom are actually completely fake. He admits that he does it to try to get what he wants. And for the most part, it is no success. After they suggested I was so a glue. Anyway, they mentioned that I publicly threatened to end myself if she didn't stop forcing me to make alimony payments. And that is true. I did publicly threaten to end myself. I have no defense for that because publicly threatening to end yourself is really stupid. Especially since that was a manipulative tactic and I had no actual intention of end myself. Essentially, it was because I was very angry that she lied her way into getting about $90,000 out of me. Actually, over $100,000, so I was already paying her alimony before the court even ordered me to pay alimony. As you know, I care. Despite the fact that after I asked her to sign divorce papers, I told her she could stay in the house. It wasn't as if I was kicking her out. But you know, who cares about that, right? Let's only focus on the negative about Onision that we don't know for a fact is true or not, because you're dishonest people. It's so what does this say about Onision? He knowingly admits this stuff. If anything, this is the most type of condemning behavior I've ever seen. And I think ultimately displays the real psychology behind what he does, and because he admits it, what does that say about him as a person? I don't need to explain it to you. You can see it for what it is. That is the most vitriolic, manipulative, and toxic way to try to grip hold on somebody and not let them go and then the person who is the blue starts to be concerned and worried and then maybe maybe gives in to giving him just a second or two of attention and then he gets what he wants out of it and that's not what love is if you truly love somebody if you truly want to be with somebody if things don't work out, you're gonna do your best to try to work those things out and not use threats and coercion in order to achieve some gain out of that relationship. That's not a real relationship. And that's what he does with every single relationship that he's been in. He invalidates every person's experience, everyone's trauma, everybody's personal things that they go through. He gets people to open up, share with them about their life, and then he uses that against them as a means to destroy every aspect of security and confidence that they have. Gregory is a to this platform, and I hope by my previous video and this video that there is not a shadow of a doubt in your mind that this person is in fact dangerous and should not be allowed to be on YouTube, but hey, what can you do? YouTube doesn't really seem to take anything seriously when it comes to him. Just take a look at these tweets, what he's been tweeting recently. This is what he said literally yesterday. I have no idea why you're so, like, focused on the age of consent in different areas of the world, parts of the world. It just makes you end up looking creepier than you've already made yourself look out to be. Like, here's Gregory, the arbiter of all truth and knowledge when it comes to age of consents in all the different places around the world. Like, I'm sorry, you're almost 35, 36 years old or something. You're in your 30s. I'm sorry, but you shouldn't be friends with a... 12 year old, 13 year old, 14 year old, 15 year old, 16 year old, 17. You should only be associated with people who are 18 plus, Greg. No exceptions. And your husband, too. No exceptions. And anything below that age range, the power dynamic, the influence that you have as some sort of internet celebrity, if you can even call yourself that anymore, using your platform to literally h people and traumatize them for the future and their future relationships. Not okay. But hey, you already know this. I'm just repeating myself at this rate. Thank you for watching this video all the way through. Thank you for watching my previous hour-long video. All my socials are linked down below. And also, I hit my Patreon milestone goal. And because I hit my Patreon milestone goal, I'll be producing ASMR content starting next week on my ASMR channel, which is linked down below in the description box. If you like ASMR, I recommend you subscribe to that channel. So I'm going to be having some high-quality ASMR content for your tingles and comfort, hit YouTube sometime next week. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.